But Matt Armstrong has become one of the fastest growing YouTubers on the platform and is a true example that if you work hard, you can achieve literally anything. At this point, if you have even the slightest interest in do-it-yourself style videos or cars, I'm sure the YouTube algorithm has purposely put him on your homepage. He's even made it on YouTube trending. So I'd say he's a pretty big deal. Now the real question is how exactly did he do it? How did he go from being broke just a few years ago to now owning supercars and becoming one of the fastest growing YouTube channels in the car niche? Today, I will be sharing with you the story about Matt Armstrong and how he went from having nothing to having one of the most popular car YouTube channels on the platform and also becoming a millionaire by simply rebuilding cars and recording it. Now his story is quite interesting and I definitely suggest watching all the way to the end. Crazy enough, Matt is only 29 years old. He grew up in the UK, specifically in England, as his accent and video suggest. I've just bought the cheapest 718 Cayman S in the whole entire country. Now, in order to understand how he built his success, I have to take you back as far as his YouTube channel lets us, which is about seven years ago. His first uploads show his love for BMXing. We can learn a few things though from these early videos. First is that he has a passion for doing things his own way, and also that he enjoys creating and documenting his journey by making YouTube videos, although I'm not sure he actually knew it at the time. Now, honestly, it's truly remarkable that even at a young age, we can see the signs of a future successful entrepreneur. Notice he has a do-it-yourself mindset and creativity, which are traits that are common for many successful wealthy entrepreneurs. In the beginning of his YouTube career, his channel was mainly used to showcase his BMX tricks to attract sponsors. I don't think becoming a YouTube creator was honestly his primary focus at the time, or even an option. Now we can also see that he has a taste for sports cars as they tend to pop up a lot in his uploads. As his YouTube suggests, he was quite successful in his BMX career. Getting sponsored by big brands and competing gave him the luxury to travel all around the world, visiting countries like France, Germany, Barcelona, and even Dubai. It's clear from his videos he liked being his own boss and entrepreneur, excelling in the art of sales and marketing, which are key traits not many people have. And it's those specific traits that landed him his sponsors. He focused more on creating his own career than trying to find a nine to five job. These are common things that we see in successful people and also something that we have explored here on the channel from other successful millionaires. Now, it wasn't until Matt got injured from BMXing that he realized he needed to change his career, not to mention how expensive it was to travel the world for competitions. In short, he was running out of money. He bounced around jobs, working at Halfords, which is a cycling company in the UK, as well as his father's automotive shop, where he learned the key basics to working on cars. It allowed him to land a job at Graham Good Motors in the UK, where he continued to explore his passion for not only cars, but also allow him to dabble in the social media space. His job at Graham Good involved running their social media channels such as YouTube, while also creating and managing their websites and online stores. You can already see his current YouTube channel start to take place years before it even happened. Note, this is a genius strategy too to get paid to explore the hobbies you're interested in. So consider this before you get your next job. Now for Matt, he also worked simultaneously at an Indian restaurant called Spice 45 when not at his other jobs. And he eventually would upload a video to his channel titled We Bought House Number Two, which revealed his true intentions for working two jobs. His goal was to be become a landlord, buying properties at the low, fixing them up, and then renting them out. And this was in order to earn enough passive income to eventually retire and get the freedom to BMX and work on his cars as a hobby. But he didn't just stop there. While working both jobs and managing his properties, he was also continuing to post videos on YouTube. To him, YouTube was just for fun and a way to document his journey. He would regularly post videos about BMX, working on his cars, vlogs, and even when he was buying and flipping his houses. Now, he truly just enjoyed creating and sharing his experiences with the rest of the world, and YouTube made it easy for him to do that. Keep in mind, he knew the videos paid him nothing, but he continued to upload as it was just a fun hobby to test his skills. Monetizing your hobbies is a genius move. This in turn could turn into a full-time career that never actually feels like one. Now, it wasn't until the COVID pandemic lockdown when things took a complete 360 for Matt. He was let go from both of his jobs and had nothing to do besides sit at home. Now, right around the same time, his girlfriend had unfortunately gotten into a car accident in her Audi TT. <laughs> Matt decided to rebuild her car himself because it was cheaper than paying all that insurance money to a body shop. Now remember, he already had the experience from his dad's shop and at Graham Good, and with all the newfound free time, he thought he might as well just give it a shot. The best part was it also gave him content to post on YouTube and allowed him to try the things he learned from all these other jobs he's worked at. The best part was it also allowed him to ramp up the speed in which he posted his videos and also allowed him to focus on making better quality content. 
content, so it was a win-win in every department. Without even realizing it, his recognition started to grow and people started to notice him all around his town. The views on his videos also started to take off. It was once a few hundred people watching him turned into thousands. And he also learned how easy and trendy it was to post a series of videos fixing his girlfriend's car. This in turn meant he stopped posting BMX videos and vlogs and went full in on car rebuilding videos. His channel quickly got monetized and his videos started to make him money. As time went on, he had eventually saved up for another down payment on a house, but had a big decision to make. Should he spend the money on a property or should he put the money towards another rebuild? Especially because the Audi TT videos did so well and he pretty much rebuilt the car and needed more content if he wanted to pursue YouTube further. Well, he took a huge leap of faith and decided to spend the money on another salvage car. This way, he could continue to make his YouTube videos in the hopes that he would grow his channel. Crazy enough, he did just that. In the next car series alone, it allowed him to gain over 100,000 subscribers. Eventually though, the pandemic lockdown was lifted and he was finally able to return back to his old job at Graham Good Motors. Although it wasn't much later that he decided to quit to pursue YouTube full time. I mean, think about it. It makes more sense when you can be your own boss and make more money for yourself than the job you're currently working at that involves 40 hours a week. Quitting that job gave him his freedom back to continue to make content. Yes, he no longer would be able to make money from his current job, but he knew that with the time he now had, he could focus all of his energy in on his YouTube channel and hopefully that would make him more money in the long run. And that's called opportunity cost. All throughout 2020, 2021, and even mid 2022, he focused on his YouTube. And in just those few years alone, he amassed a following of nearly 400,000 subscribers and perfected his craft at making YouTube videos. He found what worked and he knew that each time he bought a salvage car, it had to be better than the last. Starting from an Audi TT, he quickly went to an Audi S5, into BMWs, Mercedes, Bentleys, Range Rovers, and even an Aston Martin. He even found a genius way to make sure that his builds could be financially covered, minimizing his risk. At the end of each build, he would raffle them off through a company he knew closely called Exclusive Competitions, releasing a limited number of raffle tickets for sale. If all the raffle tickets sold out, which they did, it would make him enough money to cover the cost of the build and also to start another project car. It's truly a genius concept and something you should really think about if you have your own business. You always want to reduce your risk when you can. The salvage cars gave him content to monetize and then he was also able to raffle the cars when they were built. So even if somehow he managed to break even on the car if the raffles didn't fully sell out, it wouldn't matter because he was able to profit 100% off the actual videos and content he produced. Near shortly after his last build, he took another leap of faith and spent the most money on a salvage Lamborghini Murcielago. This would be his new project car. Spending over $100,000 on this car that couldn't even run or drive. Within just a few episodes of the Murcielago series, it completely changed his YouTube channel forever. In just the first few videos he uploaded, he turned his subscriber account from 400,000 to nearly 800,000 subscribers. What took him almost three years to amass, he doubled in a matter of a few videos. Each episode ranked in nearly 1 million views, and due to the nature of his content, those views would then spill over onto all his older content because he made them in a series. And if you look at his channel now, he's bringing in nearly half a million views a day when he only uploads once a week. It's truly a genius plan to create these evergreen style videos that never get old and people can watch it anytime in series. So if we use a YouTube revenue calculator like Social Blade, it can give us a pretty good estimate of how much he's actually earning. Now, Social Blade is pretty accurate in regards to views and subscriber growth, but they aren't that great in determining what a YouTuber's revenue is. As I've explained here on the channel, channel, each niche has its own CPM, which is how much money is paid from YouTube per thousand views. Typically, car niches are somewhere in the middle, earning roughly four to five dollars per thousand views, but we can get a better idea if we do some snooping and figure out what other car creators are earning in the space. Looking at a few other channels, we can get a rough idea that it's closer to four dollars and fifty cents to maybe even five dollars, and we can see that Matt's channel just off YouTube revenue alone could be bringing in over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, but no one knows for sure unless he reveals his earnings. Now, this is only one revenue source Matt is monetizing on. He has a lot of others. If we take a look at his videos, you'll notice that in each one, he has a sponsor. Every video he posts, I believe, has one of four sponsors. Squarespace, YFood, Surfshark, and Car Vertical. Now, the way sponsors work is they pay you a flat fee to be included in a video, as well as usually offer an affiliate link. Now, I know for sure he earns money through his affiliates, probably 10 to 20% of each purchase or sign up. If only 1% of his viewers of a one million view video followed through and used an affiliate code of his, that would be 
around 10,000 people. Not to mention these sponsors are most likely paying him for each video they are mentioned in or for the month. And then let's not forget about his apparel line that he started too. When you combine his YouTube revenue, his sponsors, his affiliate revenue, and his apparel company, and also his raffle tickets, he's easily bringing in over 1 million in revenue this year, which is truly incredible. And since he is such a great creator, he truly deserves every penny. It's all too often I begin to see a pattern in successful entrepreneurs, and Matt Armstrong is the perfect example. They all have a talent for sales and marketing, and they all have a passion for carving their own path through life. Every time there is an obstacle in their way, they learn how to overcome it instead of letting it defeat them. Unfortunately, though, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there is a lot more we'll be seeing from Matt Armstrong. With that being said, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already. And if you want to see what other supercar millionaires have to say about building wealth, then make sure to watch the video right over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.